Hello everyone, welcome to Scorch Your Toys at NAMoon.com's review of Arcadia's 160 scale VF19 Kai and Sound Booster gift set. This gift set was released in September 2014 for 34,800 yen. You might be thinking, wow, this looks just like the Yamato VF19 Kai and Sound Booster. And it very much is. There are some very minor differences. Since I have already done at length reviews and transformation guides of the Yamato product, I'm going to try to keep this quick. The differences between the Arcadia toys and the Yamato toys are purely superficial. Absolutely no improvements or changes have been made to the Arcadia toy from the Yamato mold. So it's in the, completely the exact same mold, just some superficial cues were changed. The most obvious right off the bat here, you have a clear canopy on the Yamato toy. On the Arcadia toy, it has kind of a gold effect to it. Very nice. The Arcadia toy also has these gold shoulders and ankle trim, whereas the Yamato toy, that is bright yellow. So, Arcadia, gold triangle Q in the shield, Yamato, that is yellow. So, really it's just the yellow has been replaced with gold. That's the big change here. Plus again, gold canopy, gold arrow, yellow arrow on the Yamato, yellow intakes on the Yamato, gold intakes on the Arcadia. So again, superficial, just gold has replaced the yellow, and I guess gold has replaced clear. These are the guns. They are exactly the same. Same red, there's definitely no change there. And honestly, that's something I was kind of let down by. I was hoping that we would get a metallic red finish. I mean, if you're gonna go gaudy, go gaudy, right? Unfortunately, uh, they went with the same red they had used before, I guess, because they were concerned about emulating a Bandai to toy too closely. Here is the Arcadia gold lightning bolt. There's the Yamato yellow lightning bolt. Again, same toys, just slight differences in trim. All right, let's do a quick rundown of the features of this toy. Again, the exact same toy as the VF-19, but with some superficial differences. You get the exact same pilot figure that the VF-19 Yamato toy came with. You get the same singing pilot figure that came with the Yamato sound booster. So you get both of those in this gift set. You have and articulated landing gears. The back ones actually pivot outwards and lock into place. Rolling rubber wheels on these, painted doors on the outside, very nice touch. Articulated tow bar in the front, again, rubber wheels that spin. Gun obviously can be attached in fighter mode. There's no front peg, so it can get, kind of get knocked back and forth on you, but generally it'll stay right where you want it to stay. Uh, the intake covers are not removable unlike many of Yamato's other efforts. They actually made these ones fixed in place, which some people found a, a big bummer. There's a couple little tabs in the front here that don't lock into place. That's my only real gripe for fighter mode. A word of warning, the tailing edges of these surfaces are incredibly sharp. So uh, watch out for your fingers and watch out for those edges because you could ding them up during transformation. The sound booster comes with two clips. This first one is for the Yamato display stand. Uh, we're just gonna put that aside. The second one is needed for attaching the sound booster to the fighter mode VF-19 Kai. Uh, so it's a bummer this piece exists at all, but I guess it's nice they include it. You would hope that they could have just come up with some integrated solution, especially at the price point that we're at. This just clips on to the toy, and you might be thinking, are there kind of several different shades of red involved with this toy? And the answer to that is yes, there are several different shades. Although for some reason it all kind of works, even though you wouldn't think it would. All right, so that piece has now clearly snapped into place to put it on your Valk. You just kind of pull the wing forward a little bit and bring up these tail fins. And then this will just clip on the outside of those tail fins. So. 
Uh, as with all things, a little trickier if you had lights in front of your face and a camera. Shouldn't be too bad in person. There we go. All right, so now I have the sound booster in position. It locks very securely. You can flip the toy upside down. Uh, kind of an X thing going on. Um, it's there and it's locked into place well, so I guess that's all good. Again, it'd be really nice if that were some sort of an integrated solution. I am not a fan of VF19 Gearwalk modes, but of all of the ones I've come across, Yamato and now Arcadia did it best. So this toy has locks right up against this wing that tab everything together so it's incredibly solid in this mode. Uh, it's not falling apart uh, left or right uh, and it holds a pose very well so it's all all well and dandy. The one big weakness to this mode and the one big weakness to the Yamato VF19 in general are the ball joints in the feet. So you might be looking at those feet and wondering what I'm doing and why I would do that. Um, the ideal situation would be to have the toe flat and then bring this heel way up so that the feet are angled and that lets you get the aggressive leg pose and that's all fine and dandy. Uh, the problem is the ball joints can get loose if you try to bring these heels back too far uh, and then you'll find yourself fighting the toy all the time. So what I do generally is I just curve that toe so I get my my angle that I want anyway and then you can actually brace the toe up against the side of the ankle and it allows you to enjoy gear walk mode without potentially breaking the ball joints. So that's a plus. When going from fighter mode to gear walk mode, you're going to have to transform the gun. Well, it's not much of a transformation. You just slide the grip forward, get a fingernail in here and pull down this whatever this is. If you wanted to, you can also remove the magazine. Just pull down. Ugh. It is, it's in there pretty good and there's not much of a benefit. So you pull this down, there's no detail inside. Uh, it's just a gimmick that you probably will never use. There you go. Fits in the hand just fine. There's a little slot there. Uh, so like I said, Gearwalk, it's as good as VF19 Gearwalks get. Here is the Yamato version. Uh, again, all that's really happening here is yellow has been replaced by gold. Uh, while we're here, I've got the alternate shield on my Arcadia toy right now. You can see it's angled and it fits in the center of the toy's arm. Uh, it's really good looking for uh, anime accuracy. It's not perfect transformation though. This is the perfect transformation shield. And as you can see, it's squared and it fits alongside one edge of the arm. Okay, let's continue on to Batroid mode. Now, uh, I guess before I do that, I should note, I already do have a transformation video out there. Check it out, nothing's changed with Arcadia and you would not be using your sound booster in any capacity in Gearwalk mode. Okay, here's Batroid mode, and we're gonna do a quick articulation run through just to kind of kick things off. First and foremost, the gun. I just wanna show you that it's very secure in that hand. So that's a good thing. We will go ahead and pop it out anyway. You have a head. The head is not on a ball joint. It just spins left and right and goes up and down. And as you can see by me holding it, the uh, head lasers are articulated and pivot in and out. Then you have the rotation point at the shoulder, which lets you get all the way around. You can also pivot away from the body at the shoulder. The little inner shoulder pieces will move to get out of your way. There is a swivel point right above, or right in the bicep, really. So this piece here gives the appearance of a fatter bicep. And there's a pivot point within it. If you pull it up, it reveals a double elbow mechanism, which then allows you to bring the hand all the way up, like so. Or you can bring that down, and then you have a single elbow mechanism for your normal 90-degree range of movement. 
Hands are peg ins, they can rotate all the way around. You have a thumb, gun, trigger finger, and then the other three fingers are all in one hinge. There is no waste. There couldn't really be a waste as far as I'm aware, given the design of the VF-19. Uh, there are the ability to bring the arms back. This is kind of a transformation mechanism, but it can lead to some pretty fun poses too. So that's another option of open to you. Uh, I just knocked a hinged door loose. Uh, if this happens during handling, not at all a big deal. It just kind of pops right back into place. I'm not sure I got it perfectly in there, but there it goes. All right, so you can also change the pivot of the shoulders. Then you have your pivots out at the hips. You have your rotation point forward at the hips and back. Then you have your gear walk joint, your knee, your swivel at the knee, and your ball jointed ankles, which have a pivot point inside, as you can see, and the ball joint themselves. The gimmicks have carried over from the Yamato toy, as one would expect, since this is exactly the same mold. Uh, I mentioned you could pivot the shoulders up and down. If you bring them down, you can also pop them open to reveal speaker imagery, which is pretty cool. A little bit of painted silver detail in there. To my eye, it is exactly the same detail from the Yamato toy. There is also, on the back of the toy, a trap door that opens up. And if you open it all the way, you can then, uh, you have to pop something in here to swing open this door. You can actually see the little pilot figure inside. So that's a nice little touch. <clears throat> and it is, does resemble some scenes from Macross 7. Uh, one weakness that's also carried over from the Amato toy, uh, this crotch mechanism, very loose. Um, it's not bad on my original Yamato 19 Kai or my VF-19S, uh, but it did seem like it became a problem for Yamato on their 19F and 19P toys, and it continues to be a problem here. Here is the sound booster in backpack mode. Uh, transforming the Arcadia version is an absolute nightmare. They just made things much, much tighter, much stiffer, uh, and as a result, it is just very painful. This front peg, which is absolutely necessary for fitting into the back of the toy. Uh, it was almost impossible to pull upward. Uh, same thing, these shoulder buffers, uh, less important, but also just damn near impossible to actually pull down. So that was a miserable experience. My Yamato toy, uh, much, much smoother to get through. Uh, the attachment of the toy, these pegs, oops, almost pushed that down, which would be a nightmare go into these holes on the back. Now, you can kind of see where uh, there's a little bit of red plastic from where I've put this sound booster in before on the back there, so uh, maybe that means in the future I, my sound booster will be a little bit easier to transform. Anyways, those pegs, you just line them up, push in, and now your sound booster is in place. Just bring things down until they rest on the shoulders. And there you go. Now you have the toy with the sound booster on. Looks pretty sharp. It's a good display piece, although the sound booster itself for what they charged originally I thought was kind of insane. Here you don't have a choice. It's in the gift set and you probably paid too much for that anyway. So you just have to like it. And if you're a Macross 7 fan, it's gonna appeal to you anyways. If you're not a Macross 7 fan, you're probably looking at these paint jobs and thinking both are absolutely hideous, and that's okay. All right, so you can see some color differences here. Again, you have gold, yellow. You also have some brown panels up here versus purple panels, so uh, other little color differences. But again, that is it. Nothing but superficial differences between these two toys. This toy also comes with an optional face. Uh, having a face alone is probably too much for most people, but you can go ahead and swap it out. You just lift up and pull off the visor. It has a couple of tabs it attaches by. Uh, you can then 
just pop off the face. Little creepy looking at this point. Here is the ninja face, so no clown mouth on it. That you can just peg into place. There you go, so a little bit more serious. Here again was the original version, so just a mouth cover comes down. Uh, and then of course you would just peg back in the visor. And there you go. Less clowny fire valve. This toy also comes with optional filler pieces for the backs of the legs. As you can see, there's some big cavities on either side here. You also have a piece that looks like this. It's just one piece, and it has a peg. There's a hole in the back here. And you're just going to fit that peg in that hole, and that is all there really is to it. Fits in real easy, real smooth. And now the back of your Fire Valkyrie looks a little more consistent with thick and chunky legs. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, I could still find the Yamato VF-19 and sound boosters for sale at certain retailers. Why should I buy the Arcadia toy? Uh, to that I answer these diorama pieces which you will find in the very bottom of the Arcadia box. You've got Mylene, Ray, Vifidus, and Basara all in their uh, ready-to-play concert positions, with the exception of Vifidus, who's holding a boombox instead of playing the drums. Uh, that might bum some people out. The paint jobs are amazing on these little figures. Uh, so for a bunch of people, this is going to be a good enough reason to grab the Arcadia version instead of a Yamato version on sale. Uh, since again, they're almost the same toy. Here's the little Basara Pilot figure. It looks like these figures might be slightly larger than 160 scale, going by the Pilot figure, but they're certainly close enough where everything looks great. Um, I don't know if I really can recommend the Arcadia version, uh, other than the fact that it comes with these parts, over the Yamato version. The Arcadia version for me was much tougher to transform because of how tight everything was. And yet the one thing I wanted to be tighter, that being that little crotch piece, was just as loose as ever. So uh, they made it less enjoyable of a toy, but not so much where it's not still a highly recommended product for me. I really wish they had changed the red. I wish Arcadia was more concerned about differentiating themselves from Yamato than they are uh, differentiating themselves possibly from a Bandai toy, which is... Uh, quite honestly, uh, totally different product. So I don't know why they'd ever be concerned with that. Check out my full review on anymoon.com. And as always, thanks for watching.